I'm Tracy Walker. I'm a filmmaker. I'm Rachel Baskerville. I'm a photographer. And together we are producing a calendar. Join us as we take to the road to get to know 12 fabulous women and their old girls. This is Old Girls on the Road. I'm really looking forward to our first sports car today. Uh, so lucky to have Ruth and her Datsun Fair Lady involved. It's a sweetie. Hello. Hello. Hi, how Ruth. Are how are you? Look at your gorgeous little car. I know. It looks lovely. Thank you. <laughs> This is actually one car that I would really love to jump in and go for a drive. And never come back. Yeah. <laughs> or never give it back. No. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely it's beautiful. Thank you. Thanks so much for having us here today, uh, Ruth, and being part of Old Girls on the Road. Your work in progress here is looking lovely. Is this the first house this you've restored? This is the first house we've restored, so yeah, it's it was Originally a five year project, but we're four and a half years in and we've got way more than six months to go, so. That's the way it goes. Your mum passed away when she was 42 and you were very small. How do you think that's affected uh, your thoughts on the ageing process? Obviously way past 42 now, but when I was younger that was my expected lifespan and I didn't really put anything, any thought into what I was going to do with my life after I was 42 because that was the, you yeah. know, the finite end. Um, and since I've reached the point where she passed away and I've kept going, I've kind of become a default yes person and I... And has that made life a lot more fun? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Unquestionably. You sound like you live an incredibly busy life. <laughs> Aside from restoring houses and cars, we also hear that you have a baby grand piano as well. I do, yes. I just randomly saw this grand piano on eBay. And so you bought it off eBay. You didn't do what I did and buy it sight unseen. <laughs> Never bought a piano on eBay sight unseen, but I have bought a fair lady. <laughs> Ooh. Really, from oh. from Melbourne, it was they put it on with the buy it now price of something ridiculous. I saw it and showed Alan, and he went, "Oh!" And I went, "Can we buy it?" And he went, "Okay." So we decided that we would jump on a plane and fly down to Melbourne. And we got to the house, and the guy wasn't there, so we transferred him money. So we didn't. So we never met the seller. The car was outside with the keys under the mat when we went down there. Oh my goodness. Um, with an envelope with $100 in it for petrol because he couldn't believe we were doing it either. <laughs> and we got in it and it was, it was just all over the road and so skatey and oh. horrendous and the brakes would lock on and we kind of, and this is by this stage it's peak hour traffic in Melbourne and we're trying to leave the city. Um, so we pulled into a servo and we just went, look, if we can't get it to work, um, we'll just have to get a tow truck from here and you know get it shipped home and make our way to Tolmarine and find a plane or something. Um, but then we put in some air in the tyres and changed it from, I think it was, one of them was 12 psi, that one was 40. That one was, a, that one was about 20 and that one was like 35 or something. So we put them to 30 all round um, and it drove beautifully. Thank you eBay. Yeah, that's it. We play a game with our ladies. It's okay. called Fast and Furious. Awesome. <laughs> we ask you five questions. Yep. We give you two options. You've got to go really quick and don't think about it. Okay. Uh, and the answer that you give us is uh, what you believe is more conducive to a positive ageing process. Okay. So, moderate alcohol consumption or bottoms up? Bottoms up. A challenge or a comfort? Challenge. 10 units of Botox or a puffteenth of attitude? Oh, definitely the attitude. Yep. <laughs> a sea change or a tree change? Oh, it depends on the day. Tree change. <laughs> and money or love? Love. Oh, 
It's nearly as cute as the whole car, isn't it? <laughs> as many hours on the um, buffing yeah. wheel. Do you do any work on it yourself? You do? Good on you. I do. I get seconded in to do all the tight, squeezy ones because my arms are skinny. Oh, so. OK. How long have you had this gorgeous car? You call her baby, don't yes, you? How I long do. have you had baby and how did you get her? I have had her since 2006. Um, in 2005, we went for a drive to the car, car club nationals. One of Alan's friends had two cars and wanted to take both of them. And so we drove the second one and oh, I just okay. went, oh, must need one of those. Um, <laughs> must and, have. Yeah, must have. Yep. And Alan was taking so long to restore his that I went, I'm just going to buy one. So I did and it was funny because we had it parked in the backyard after we'd stripped it down and I've heard this come here I think he said and it sounded in this almost panicked voice like there was something wrong and I've gone bolting up the stairs and gone what is wrong and he's standing there with a photograph of the car and he's going I think that's my old car. So it was the same car? It was the same car so he bought it, restored it, sold it they'd sold it to somebody else, they'd probably sold it to somebody else, and then Goodness I'd me. ended up just yeah, randomly buying it back. Again. Yeah. Goodness me. Do you have a favourite memory of being out driving in this car? My favourite and probably most vivid and long-lasting memory in this car is um, we actually drove to Tasmania in it, to put it on the boat and drove around Tasmania in it up for our honeymoon when Alan and I got married. And we, we calculated it all really, really carefully and we worked out that we could leave Hobart and get to Derwent Bridge and our lovely Lonely Planet travel guide told us that the servo at Derwent Bridge closed at six o'clock and we'd just get, that was just one tank of fuel and then we ended up doing a few little things when we first started so we've kind of pulled into Derwent Bridge on almost less than empty to discover that they changed the times of the servo opening and it in fact closed at 5.30 and it was quarter to six. We worked out that we were going from the next nearest servo was um, Queenstown which is about 90 kilometres away mm -hmm. and we're on empty and but we worked out that it was downhill nearly all the way <laughs> so, <laughs> so we literally drove oh from Derwent Bridge to Queenstown with the engine off and it was the most so we did 90 kilometres um, and it was just silent. You guys are risk takers wow. so, <laughs> and it started coughing and spluttering as, at the very final hill as we were going over um, the hill into Queenstown, it started coughing and spluttering and I'm just going, oh please don't do it now, but it, it kept going and it. it was downhill all the way from there to the servo and I still remember pulling up this service station in Queenstown and I literally got out and kissed the Bowser. I've looked at your website, <laughs> early, earlydatson.com, check it out, there's way too many cars for us to list now. Yeah. I don't think I could list them all, to be honest, either. But what's been your most favourite out of all the cars you've owned? Definitely this one, oh. yeah. If one day down the track you didn't have Baby anymore, what would you miss the most about her? Her personality. I know it sounds really weird because she's an inanimate object, but it's just like when I get into her and if, I don't even have to be driving, I can just be sitting here and it just feels like we're kind of mates and we've got this Oh, no. That sounds bizarre, no. I know, doesn't it? No. <laughs> but I sit down and I just fit in this little hollow in the seat and I go, ah, the world's all right again. That was fantastic. Pleasure. Uh, yeah. I hope we, keep, we see you at the um, calendar launch. Absolutely. 28th of October. Wouldn't miss it. See ya. Bye. Hey! What? <laughs> See you next week! Bye. <laughs>